Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, so in my previous video that was similar to this one, I learned how to instance a bunch of scenes onto tiles. Uh, so all the flowers you can see are actually scenes that have been instanced at the location of a tile map that's underneath them. Um, so I had about 8,000 flowers last time, now I got about 10,000. And I've added a couple more effects and some cool little things just messing around here, seeing what applications this might have for some gameplay for potentially my first commercial project. Um, but uh, really just messing around and I thought I'd show you how I did this and what I've come up with so far. So you can see that you can actually sort of paint the flowers as you move through them. And you can randomize this color and sort of paint whatever you want. Uh, also, I have a little dash mechanic here and it's not quite working the way I envisioned it. Um, basically, you can still move around once you've activated the dash. Uh, I kind of want it to be like you just dash for a set distance in a one direction and you're not able to change while you're dashing. Uh, still haven't figured out how to do that, but that's okay. Um, another thing you can do is this little sort of pulse mechanic. Basically, you paint the flowers within a certain radius of the player, a randomized color. So you can dash around the field and sort of paint the flowers as you go. And I think it looks pretty cool. So I'll show you how I did this and uh, get into some of the differences between this version of the field and my sort of previous experimental video where I was doing something similar. So let's take a look. All right, so in this version of the field, I got about 10,000 flowers. Uh, previously, I had about 8,000. It should sort of be arbitrary, obviously, like within the limits of like your machine's memory, um, because whenever you're in the field in game, it only shows the flowers within the bounds of the camera. Um, so it shouldn't actually have too much of a hit on performance. And as you saw, it was above uh, 70 and that's with sort of OBS running in the background. So that's pretty good for this laptop. Um, I also have some new little objects here in the field. They're basically just static uh, objects with a little bit of animation running on them. Um, I'm basically using a light 2D to sort of mask a texture that's looping in the background. Um, and also the individual flowers themselves are actually a, a group of scenes. Um, it just allows me to rotate the flowers a bit better when the player is moving through them. So previously, I was kind of using animations to actually sort of push or bend the flowers out of the way of the player. Uh, but now I'm using tweens. So it's a little different, and I think it gives a much smoother motion. Uh, basically, when the player enters the sort of collision shape of the flower, it does a couple of things. I have a tween for modulating that flower, and that's what's sort of changing the color based on a randomized color that I'll show you in a second. Um, it's getting the position of the player and then either tweening it to the right or rotating it to the right or the left based on the flower's position relative to the player. And that's basically how I get the effect of pushing the flowers to the left or the right as the, play the player is moving through the field. Uh, as for the flower pulse itself, let me go to my player scene. The player has a sort of big collision shape that is disabled most of the time. And then when you hit the enter key, in, in my case, or whatever key you want, it activates that collision shape for a very small amount of time. And every single flower that is sort of touching that collision shape is affected a little bit differently. So it basically gets the position from the flower to the center of the player character when the flower comes into contact with that big collision shape. And then it uses the distance to set the time that that flower has to animate itself. Uh, so I think it looks pretty cool, and that's accomplished also on tweens. Basically, it's also, it's uh, not only changing the color of the flower, um, but it's also changing the uh, height of the animation. And I kind of just was playing around with what actually looked good, like I was just picking numbers to divide the distance by and um, just sort of manually choosing values to see what looks good. I can change this value and then it'll sort of have a bigger effect on the animation. In fact, let's do that right now. I'll change this to like 100. So I can move around, got my color, I can dash. Um, if I hit enter now, there we go. It's like really slow. 
and the amount the pl plant the amount the flowers are actually sort of moving up by is pretty tiny. Um, so you can see you can move away from that location and it just continues at that location. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, uh, so here's the pulse function that I'm calling whenever I'm hitting the enter key. Um, it's choosing a random color, and I'll show you that in a second, and then just activating that uh, collision shape and then turning it off after a short amount of time. So in my stats singleton, uh, that's where I'm keeping track of what colors I'm using. And I literally just looked at a bunch of color palettes and just picked some color palettes that look good, like colors that were complementary, um, that looks good together. And currently, I don't have a way of switching between these palettes in the game, so I kind of just do it right here before we go into the game. But uh, if you can imagine, you can pull up like a HUD color wheel, and then once you choose another palette, it just sets a different color array to choose from. Um, so for example, I started with the primary, and that's just red, yellow, and blue. Um, I'll switch it to array start at zero, sunset two, so hot pink. And the color set will also change that to sunset. And there we go. So now our sort of walk color is kind of this hot pink magenta. Um, you can dash around. And when you pulse, it now draws from that new color set. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, definitely tweaking all of the effects in here just to try to get it to where I kind of want it to be to achieve the effect that I want. But uh, this looks pretty good, I think. I, again, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this, but because this is just an experiment to see how I can use some new techniques that I've learned. Um, I think it turned out pretty well, and I'm still impressed by the way that it actually runs on this laptop. So, hope you like that. Um, this is just me sort of experimenting and messing around with the various things that I learn as I learn more about Godot and how to use the many aspects of the engine. And uh, this might actually show up in a future commercial project, because I think this is a, kind of a cool mechanic. Um, so I'll see what I can do with it. In the meantime, thank you all for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. And uh, thanks again.